Hello YouTube, um, with this video I wanted to show you that I finally have been able to reach 3200 MHz on the uh, Asus X370 Prime Pro. And the way I did this is I will show you in the BIOS um, the settings that I have used. But let's first go over the Ryzen timing checker. Now I will say that the kit that I'm using is actually a uh, G-Skill Ripjaws V or 5 or whatever you say for the 3600 MHz CL16 but I have been able to run this at 3200 MHz um, if I try even 3266 it's not stable like I can't run OCCT for more than a couple of minutes and then it crashes and you will get random blue screens and all sorts of stuff so I can't get to that um, speed even with really sloppy timing so I decided to do 3200 megahertz which is stable and then just um, optimize the timings instead and I will show you the timings in the BIOS but this is a quick overview as you can see here the you have CL14 you have really nice TRAS TRC and all of those nice really low TFA and uh, all of those settings and you can see I have command rate of 1T and proc ODT of 53 ohms which is really nice and uh, TRC on 280. Now they have said that you can actually get to 264 or something like that when you have Samsung B die like I do, but I haven't been able to do this. I started with a uh, TRC of 300 and then I have been eking my way downwards, and anything under 280 it's not stable. So that is that has to be what I have to settle with. For now, for this BIOS ver uh, version, the uh, 4008, I think it is, we'll look into the correct BIOS version when we go into the BIOS. As you can see, the actual SOC voltage, I have this in the BIOS at 1.1, but I guess this is some voltage drop or something like it does fluctuate a bit, so that's um, to be expected. And I don't know if you can um, get any help from these settings, but I figured I will show you uh, what they look like. And this is what it's uh, like when it's all put together. And now let's run the ADA64 cache and memory benchmark to see what type of scores we'll get with these memory settings. So as you can see, we have just started the benchmark here. And we're gonna wait for it to finish. And I figured I will show you live so that you can see that I'm not. This is not bogus. I'm actually getting over 50,000 megabytes per second, which is really hard to get. Like the, the theoretical maximum is like 51,500. So I'm actually really close to that with these memory settings, which is nice. And as you can see, the latency here is also gonna be like 65 nanoseconds or something like that yeah even 64.7 so it's really nice um, the L1 cache is not really relevant here because in this setup I haven't overclocked the processor because what I have found is with XFR 2.0 it actually does a lot better of a job uh, on its own to like you get really high single core performance and then it can also boost fairly high in the multi-threaded performance um, without too much power draw like I can get if I put 1.425 volts through the processor I can maybe get up to um, 4.175 gigahertz which is actually lower in single core so it to me it simply is not worth it and here we have now finished, so you can see 50,000 megabits per second um, for the read speed, which is pretty damn close to what you can actually expect 
like you the it's close to the theoretical maximum and as you can see here it is the dual channel DDR4 3200 MHz 14 14 14 22 um, and a command rate of 1 so this is really tight nice timings uh, and yeah it is the Oh yeah, like I said, it's the the four oh four zero zero eight BIOS version, uh, and the uh, Agisa one point zero zero two. And if you have a newer BIOS version than this, it's quite possible that you have uh, different results. But let's go ahead and check uh, what it looks like in the BIOS, because that can be some relevant settings. Alright, so here we are in the BIOS, and or the UEFI, and what you can see here is that for the RAM it is 3200 MHz, which I have been talking about, everything else is uh, auto. And the SOC voltage, like I said earlier, is at 1.1, and the uh, DRAM voltage is 1.45, which is actually... It's fine if you have some airflow uh, over your DDR, uh, the memory modules, and if it's B die, it is also fine. Like mine doesn't really go any higher than 50 degrees uh, Celsius under heavy load, and this is in the summer, so it's really it it's fine. Um, of course, what I did first, I set this to 1.5, and then I did stress testing, and when that worked, I set it to 1.5. Four nine, and then it is, and that worked, and then one point four eight, four seven, four six, four five uh, is what I landed on. Because if I tried to go to one point four four volts, then it would become inst uh, unstable, and I would get blue screens, and it wouldn't pass the OCCT um, stress test. So these are the settings I think are the relevant ones for the DRAM on this page and let's go take a look at the timings. Oh yeah, I figured I would mention also the uh, VT T DDR voltage. Um, as you can see for me it is at 1.74 and basically I haven't been touching that because what if you don't touch it it automatically sets it to half of the DRAM voltage so I didn't have to mess with that but they do say that if you have issues with it it may help a little bit if you up the uh, voltage by a few notches extra. But I didn't need to do that in my uh, case so let's take a look at the timings. Alright so here we are in the DRAM timing control and let's go over the timings that I have been able to set to successfully get to 3200MHz uh, stable. The software that I have been using for this is the uh, Ryzen DRAM timings calculator I think it's called, it's a neat program where you basically you put in your val values from the burner typhoon program and then based on those nanoseconds values that you will be getting it will show you you can probably run your memory this low and then you have a good baseline and after that you can adjust it some so these are my settings um yeah like the dram latency as you can see it's 14 14 14 22 so it is really low i'm, I'm gonna try and zoom out here so you can see what each individual setting corresponds to because I'm not gonna I don't know much about the timings or what they do um, so I'm gonna just film this slowly here and make sure that you can see the values for each proper timing and as you can see now we have reach the end of the first page. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and we'll be back. Alright, um, so here are some more values for you to be able to see and key in on your own. Um, yeah, as you can see it's not 
that complicated you just put in these values and like I said I would start at the voltage uh, at around 1.5 and then check for stability and then um, you basically lower the voltage until it's not stable anymore um, this is an interesting thing here you have the TRFC as you can see in the program it told me to put in 300 and so I did and then you get the other values automatically and there's a formula for calculating like the relationship between the TRFC, TRFC2 and TRFC4 and you can get that in the Ryzen DRAM calculator tool as well um, but the, it was a 300 originally, uh, originally and I have been able to eke it down all the way to 280 um, which does help performance some and the last setting here is that one we have some more settings so let's scroll down the page right here are some more settings that and and again these are all man, manual settings I've put in everything manually uh, the things that are on auto that you see here is because you you can't really put those in because with the unfortunately with the prime pro board they have skimped a little bit so you can't put in all the settings um, the proc ODT which is basically a noise filter uh, I was able to set this at 53 ohms but if you have issues it can help to put it to 60 but AMD cells don't go higher than 60 um, because that can be damaging to your RAM so um, but I will again show you the settings here just make sure that you get all of them um, that I have been using and then we will scroll down and find the last settings all right uh, here we have also a command rate is basically how many clock cycles does it take for the RAM to latch on to a memory module before it starts to retrieve or write data and Putting it at 1T, you can get more performance, but if you have issues, you can try to put it at 2T uh, to get some stability. And for gear down mode, if you want to be able to have uh, your manual command rate, you need to have this disabled. Power down mode can also be disabled because you don't really save that much um, power by it. It's pretty stupid. And here these settings down here I don't know much about I just I read about it on the on some forum that these are the settings that you should have um, but if you are interested you can look up the names of the settings and what they do but these is these are the settings that you worked for me so I'm still gonna scroll down I think one more time to show you the last settings all right so here are the last settings as you can see there were only a few of them more but all of this I have had to put in manually I will say that when I tried to do the XMP uh, and it set it to 3200 megahertz which it, it just it wouldn't work it wouldn't even boot it would just be a boot loop basically so that didn't work so you have to key in the manual settings and like I said the uh, Ryzen DRAM calculator can be a really good tool for that because you basically you download the uh, Typhoon burner and then you put in what type of memory do you have and what speed do you want to run at and all of those nanoseconds that they have listed in the SPD module um, and I think that unless you have Samsung BDI, you probably won't get 3200 megahertz on this board. If you have like SK Hynix or something like that, you probably won't get that high. You can maybe get to 2133, which uh, is still higher than the 2400 that they have set out as the standard frequency, so that's probably fine. But if you want to get over 50,000 megahertz or 50,000 megabytes per second, like I did, you 
will probably need to get the bee die, uh, which is a shame because memory is really expensive right now. But I hope that through all of this, uh, I have been able to help you some uh, with this video. If you find the video, if you found the video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. And we all know that now that YouTube had changed their policy, we all need those subscribers. I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe because that would make my day. And if you like 8-bit music, I do do that sort of thing, and I've put a link in the video description so you can check that out um, if you like it. And if you don't want to know what it is, you, it can also be worth checking out. So if you want to see um, more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you have gotten, what your results are with this board, and what memory modules you've been using. Thank you for watching. See you next time.